Okay, so I'm just going to share um, from my heart today. Um, I'm going to look at Psalms 37, and we're going to read verses 3 uh, to 5. And starting from verse 3, it says, Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord, and do good. So shall you dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness. And truly you shall be fed. Verse four, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. And verse five, commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each of your loads on him. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Amen. So he gave me these three verses, but the focus and the, the highlight is definitely verse five, committing your way to the Lord and rolling and repose each care of your load on him. And so I'm just going to kind of backtrack because I just feel like God has been taking me. Well, we've been on this journey, but it's like he had me look back and look at my process of my surrender and the process of my deliverance. And so when I first came to um, JCMI back in 2017, I came there, you know, as a believer and, you know, loving God, serving God, you know, everything was about the Lord, but I came in bondage. I came with three demonic spirits, fear, worry and anxiety and that day when I came I got free from those three spirits that had me bound and I remember God telling me before coming there uh, when things were kind of like getting really bad and I, I knew I, I needed help but I didn't really know exactly you know what was wrong with me but I knew I needed help and I remember God telling me um, you have too many fears and so I want to I'm going to set you free from those fears. And when I got free, you know, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm free. And I am whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And I remember when I was on the floor, that was the first thing that Lindsay, she was right there and she spoke that word to me and I am free. And then I had to continue to walk this thing out with God because when you get free, now you have to, renew your mind, you know, and make sure you're not thinking the old way because you're a new creature in Christ, just like you, when you got saved, but now you're, you're new again. So those old spirits that were attached to you that are gone, now you have to let God renew your mind. And then there was something else that I didn't even know. There were other areas of my life that were like, in bondage and God just wanted to continue walking me through that process. So the first thing he told me to do was sit down and I did and get quiet so he can speak with me and let me know what it is that he really has for me. And the first thing he told me was, now this is the place that I really wanted you to come to. And, um, now that you're here, I can talk. So he began showing me who I, you know, who I am and what he has called me to be. And I began walking with him. And here we are. That was back in 2017. And now we're in 2024. But from then to now, it was like consistently God is always setting me free from something else. Um, that came from my 
past for my family, the way I was raised. And, you know, when I thought I was done and I was all free and clear, he would bring up other things. So recently, the word surrender, he, he was bringing that to me and letting me know that surrender is like, um, you know, we pastor did this message before. It's like when you're on the, the ground, when they're, um, the cops are going to arrest you and um, they take your hands and they put it behind your back. And when you're like that, that is God's description to me as surrender. It's like you don't have any life or strength to do anything. You're in a posture that is totally dependent upon the person that is holding you down. So you don't have, you. you there's no moves that you can make unless you you allow them to move you because you have to submit to them and then you'll be moving under their orders. And that is a position God has, has been really coming to me about is that I, I want you to totally surrender. Um, I want you to surrender your thoughts. I want you to surrender all of your ways. I want you to surrender every single thing about you, even who you think you are, your personality, all of it. Just lay every single thing down. What you think, just lay everything down at my feet and be instructed by me. So, you know, getting delivered those years ago, um, I think like what, six years ago, I thought, you know, I'm free and clear. I'm done. I'm getting ready to get into my, um, the next phase of life. But he was showing me like, no, there's still more. Okay. So, um, the next thing he said was to me, like, I want you to allow me to finish what I started. And, um, the scripture that was coming to mind was that he will perfect that which concerneth you. But for this season, when God shows you what it is, he wants you to surrender and he lets you know that he wants you to change. He wants you to stop speaking like that or stop doing this, um, stop defending yourself, stop um, whatever it is, whatever attitude or thought process you had that he wants you to no longer act in that way. He doesn't want you to do it. Like once you know what the issue is, it's like he doesn't want you to try not to do it because that, that doesn't work. And I realized the times that I really got totally free was when I went to God and said, God, I thank you for exposing this thing in my heart. And so now I lay it at your feet. And I did that verbally with, so many different things that he was dealing with. You know, if it was pride or anger, um, uh, control, trying to control situations, I would just say, God, I just, I give you this control now. I lay it down at your feet and I'm asking you to take it. I drop it right now and I'm leaving it here at your throne. And it was just that simple. And he did it every time. And it was like instant, but I laid it down with all of my heart. And, you know, I got tired of that part of me that kept rearing its head, you know. And, I, you know, I, I thought that part was dead and then it's rearing its head again. And I'm like, God, no, I'm laying it down because the other times I was trying, but this time I'm giving it to you. And those things I mean, when I really gave it to him and I cried out with all of my heart, God, take this from me, it was gone. And it, it never reared his head again. And it was like, I could feel every time God cleansed me from something, it felt like my best description is like a coolness. You ever eat a mint and then after you eat the mint, you drink water and it's like, that coolness you feel on the inside, that's my the best description. It felt like something was cut from me. And it felt like a weight was taken off because God said, finally, 
you came to me with this this problem, this issue, and you let me handle it. You let me take it away from you. And you didn't try. You know, and it's like sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, God will let you keep going, you know, keep trying. And he waits patiently until you get tired, until you get tired of yourself, until you get tired of all of antics, all of your thoughts, your ideas, these great things that you want to do. When you keep doing all these things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and it's not working, he waits until you get tired and you lay before him. And you say, God, I am done. And then he says, thank you. I've been waiting for you to get to this point so that I can do it. You know, um, it reminds me of Sarah and Abraham when he told them, their greatness. He told them they were going to have a baby. And because they got the word and they understood what God wanted for them, they went ahead and did did their own things. And when things got out of control, God was like, yeah, I told you about the promise, but I was going to bring the promise to pass, not you. And it wasn't until Abraham was down and he was out and laid out where God walked around him. And then that was the time that Sarah got um, pregnant. It was when Abraham stopped and they they stopped doing all these things to try and whatever. When they got tired, then God said, okay, now let me. And that's when the, the promise showed up. With that, you know, one of the things that I really learned on this journey, you know, why this is, it's very important that we learn this is that God wants to give it to you. You know, he he want he don't he doesn't want any of your fingerprints on it. it. It should be none of you in it. It should be like when you tell the story, God wants to present this thing that he has for you. This the gift, the promise he wants to present it to you. Daddy to his daughter, daddy to his son, so that when you tell your story, you can say my father gave it to me. And it is none of your fingerprints in there. So he gets all of the glory and you can receive it as a true gift from God, including anything you can think about, your healing, whatever desires that you have that you want God to do for you. There are steps involved. We know that. But those steps are still only the steps that God will tell you to do. He wants to guide you. He wants to walk with you step by step. You know, he wants to comfort you. He wants to wipe your tears. He wants to pick you up when you fall down. And and he wants to let you know, I'm here. He wants to carry you, to hold you, to seven age you, to love on you. So that when you turn around, you can say like, oh my God, God, you did this for me. I didn't have to do anything but listen and obey on that clear instruction that you told me to do. The only work I have to do is my faith is to believe the promise to wait and only wait for the instruction that you give me and only that instruction will I do. And then I will wait patiently with no more of my ideas and my plans, but waiting on God's ideas and his plans. Letting him finish that work. So, you know, the areas that he's showing me, like, you know, I got, I came through a lot. It was a lot of rebirthing, a lot of changing, a lot of giving up, a lot of solitude, uh, spending time with God and allowing him to correct me and point out things in me and I always prayed for a mentor. I prayed for a a teacher and God gave me all in one in my fiance, who's my, my pastor, my teacher, my leader, all of that. And when he mentors me as mentor or pastor, that's correction. And this is what I asked for, you know, and sometimes when I'm getting the correction, 
It may not feel good, but I had to continue praying to ask God, help me to receive the correction, you know? And it's only when you're not dead, that's the only time you get the correction and you want to jump up and because you're still alive. You're, you're not totally surrendered. But when you allow yourself to just the self part, let it surrender, surrender it to God and die. And like, there's no more you. There's no more me. That's what I told God. I said, God, I don't want any more of me. I don't want any more of my flesh. I'm done. I'm tired. Now, when you receive that correction, it should be easier to receive because you're not in the forefront. And that, that has been my prayer. God, continue to um, work that out on the inside of me. But I say yes to you, God. I say yes to this total surrender. And I want you to have your way in my life. Amen. So, you know, that happened this week, another surrender in my heart. And it just felt so good. And, you know, it's like, it's funny. I always knew that there was another part that was in me that needed to go because I could feel it. But it was funny. God told me when I went to sleep, you didn't want to surrender it really because you wanted to hold on to it because it was a part of you. And you felt like if you gave that up, what would you have left? Because you would be giving up all of you. And he was showing me this. This was the conversation I was having with God. And then he said, like, you, you thought that why should I give up all of me? Then what's going to be left? I'm not going to be left. Like, where's me? And <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> and then I got it. There should be no me. <laughs> My surrender is totally to God. And, um, and so this conversation goes back to pastor as my leader. And he was calling me out on something, you know, about my character and um, my defensiveness. And I kind of like said, no, that's not true. But when I went to the Lord about it, you know, God showed me, no, it's there. And because he's sensitive in his spirit, he's picking it up. I'm, I'm exposing it. I'm exposing you to him so that he can confront you on this. And then now you come to me so that you can surrender it. And when you come to me and you surrender it, totally and you're totally healed then when you go to him you can allow him to totally lead you because you have dropped all of your your defenses but that surrender happens at my throne before you can either either surrender or submit to anybody whether it's your husband your leader your business partner if you're working with somebody, you know, the submission is very powerful because it's power in submission. It brings unity. And I say, God, thank you, you know, for showing me this. And I say yes to this surrender. Again, this part of my life, this particular area that you are talking about, the defensiveness or trying to, you know, prove something that you have something to say or you want to prove your point or whatever. When you're dead, you don't have any point to prove. I'm only going to be proving the point that God places in my heart. To, whatever he says, that's what I should be saying. Not the Nelly part. Everything that I, I about me, I want it dead. I want it gone, God. Thank you. I'm leaving it here. And I'm walking away by faith, knowing that it's done. It's done. It's dead. Nelly, just bury her resurrect me as the new person 
resurrect me how you resurrected Christ. That newness, he was untouchable. He was walking through walls and doing all of that, but it was the spirit realm. It was who he was in Christ. And even in the body, his example in the flesh, he was very surrendered to his dad. That was his example is the total example of that total surrender. He was very submissive to his father, always checking with his 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 God, always checking with his dad to make sure he was right, saying the right thing, thinking the right thing, all of that. And so I said, God, that hurt Nelly, bury her. I'm done because I'm ready for this next level. And it's not going to be any of me. It's going to be all of you so that we can do this thing together. And I can totally surrender to you, totally submit to my husband to be and my teacher, my leader. And then we can go forward together as a team and just go to mountaintops for your glory and for your namesake. And surely you will get the glory because it was you who changed a part of me, God, that I could not change myself. But it happened in a spiritual surgery where you cut it from me, God. And I just tell you, thank you. So I thank you so much, Lord. Um, but just taking away, cutting out every hindrance and for allowing me to tell and, and share my story about obedience about walking with God about the total surrender and what that looks like you know um thank you and and when I feel like I can't do anything that's a, that's good because I I shouldn't want to want to do or say anything so help me to get used to that and be only prompted by your Holy Spirit and let us all continue to get used to being led by your Holy Spirit not our ways but let your way and let your will be done. These things we ask, we pray, and we declare them, oh God, and we thank you. Hallelujah. We will commit everything to you so that you can bring it to pass and only your fingerprints can be on that story. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Amen. So that's all I have, family. And uh, I pray that that message was um, a blessing to you. Amen. Mm -hmm.